violence in our community? Is it on the rise? Is there anything we can do about it? On this edition of North Shore Talk, we're going to be visiting with Pastor Lonnie Tucker and hear his thoughts. Stay tuned. Welcome to North Shore Talk. I'm your host, Beth Davis, and we're going to be chatting today with Pastor Lonnie Tucker. He has a church called Stillwater Baptist in Ponchatoula. Welcome to the show today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Glad to be here. Tell us a little bit about um, your background, how you got started with Stillwater. And... Well, we, uh, we're part of the Southern Baptist Convention. Uh, we used to be members of Woodland Park Baptist Church, and um, one of the things I probably never, ever wanted to do, and actually I prayed to God when I became a minister that he would not uh, make me have to start a church, you know. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes when you say things like that, it's the very thing that uh, God has ordained for you. And we, we planted a church. The access when we planted a church in Covington, Louisiana. And we started out there uh, actually in the same year, uh, 2005, of Hurricane Katrina. Uh, things were kind of going very well too at the beginning stage of the church and then uh, the storm hit, everything's very, very expensive and uh, kind of just maneuvered us over here where we're from actually, mm -hmm. uh, Tangible Parish and uh, Hammond, Hammond, Louisiana So uh, and then Ponchatoula so we like to say that we're a regional church we, we you know, we're, we're, we're pastoring and we're part of the, the Tangible Parish you know, Livingston Parish, St. Tammany uh, so we're here we started the church there and it has been the absolute uh, uh, greatest thing that God has ever done in my life, uh, other than save my soul, uh, and allow me to be a part of what He's doing with New Work. Hmm. Well, that's so. You are basically a native. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma and came up through Woodland Park Baptist yes, Church. Okay, and so now, you know what caught my attention because really I'm not acquainted with you mm -hmm. before that, but I uh, somehow or another uh, we were friends on Facebook, right, right. and I noticed a post one day where Pastor Lonnie said he'd been walking his neighborhood and his heart was just heavy because of the violence and the, the crime that was taking place in the streets in our community. And then he ended it and said, we must do something. And so that just really caught my attention. I was so moved that a pastor would post something. I know many great pastors in the community that, and, and I'm sure they're all concerned about this, but just that Pastor Lonnie took the time to post that um, and to share his heart and his concern for our community, and then ended with saying, we've got to do something. So Pastor Lonnie, what can we do? Well, you know, as, as you said, you know, I, I was just sitting in, in my, my, my pickup truck in my yard and uh, just thinking about uh, these lives that have just been taken from us. Uh, not something that we hear about a whole lot. As I remember, as I recall, and I'm actually from the neighborhood there, what we call the Greenville Park area. Um, and not only am I from there, but I moved back there. Mm -hmm. You know, because um, I just feel like everybody can't move away. Some people have to stay right there in the neighborhood. And living there, um, I remember some years ago when we were younger, maybe in high school, uh, early high school, that there was one of the guys that was m murdered on the corner. And this has such an impact on our community. You know, um, we talked about it. We were hurt about it. I mean, on and on. This was so just so impactful. And we look here some years later, and it's four to five deaths in our community, you know, and, you know, in, in the, in the uh, parish, you know, and this is just, this, this hurts us, you know. And I was sitting thinking about this in my truck, and I, I, I just, you know, I prayed, and I, I, I rode around, um, got out of my truck, I prayed some more, uh, just for our community. And because if I, I'm sitting there feeling like, if I'm feeling like this, and some of the, some of the people I didn't know very closely. Well, one of them I did. One of them was a, a school friend of mine. Um, so if I'm impacted this much, you know, who over over some uh, people that I, I vaguely know, you know, how much more are the mothers feeling? Mm -hmm. 
How much more if their spouses or uh, the, the children, how, how much more impactful this is for them. And my heart just got heavy. My heart was broken sitting there in my truck and I just grabbed my phone and I just started sharing, you know, just my feelings and uh, how, how much we need to value life, you know, uh, you know, and, and we didn't know what to do. We don't always know what to do. And I'm, I'm one pastor who don't, doesn't mind saying, I don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I didn't know what to do, but I didn't know that we had to do something. And just speaking with my wife and her heart is heavy as well. And we're just talking, what can we do? What can we do? Well, we knew the one thing that always worked for us. And we wanted to have a prayer walk. Hmm. You know, if nothing else, we can get engaged in our community, walk the streets and pray. You know, right. So that's what we decided. And so you did that right away. You scheduled something right away. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so we'll come back and we'll talk more about that. I want to go back to something you said a second ago. You talked about the value of life Mm -hmm. as a pastor Mm -hmm. talk about what that means what that means it you know one of the things and those who who may be bible readers uh if you you know if you're christian or not you know uh, in in genesis it teaches us that in creation god says now after he had created everything else he says let us go and make man you know and that that just touches me and to be honest all this is on my mind because if he says the, the God of our universe says that let us go and make man, it means that he was significantly involved. You know, it was even greater than making the trees, the birds, putting the seeds where they were. But it was some more involvement mm-hmm. to make man. And then he, after he had made man, he breathed into man the breath of life. You know, that breath of God, when someone dies, that's the very breath that he gave us, that he breathed into us. And I just see that our community, as as we uh, as we grow, you know, as we move further and further, generation to generation, we value life a lot less. You know, when at one time we were looking, if someone is 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 murdered, even on the television, you know, in some of our neighboring cities, it would burden us. Well, now it's not even a fact that if somebody got killed, but now it's how many. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's you know, when you turn the television on and watch the news now, it's not. Oh, I wonder if somebody got killed today. It's I wonder how many people got killed today. Mm-hmm. You know, so we just we don't value life, you know, as much as we did even some years ago. And I think that our, our hearts are growing colder and colder at a rapid pace. And I say our because I think this is our community. We, we, we are all affected by one person. It doesn't take but one person to affect the whole community. So I must say our, because though I'm not a killer or you are, that's not our hearts. But at the same time, as a, co- a collective community, it's, it's our, it's us. You know, my neighbor got yes. murdered. Yes. Your neighbor got murdered. It's, it's our community. And that's one of the things we said. We cannot just sit here and let this spirit, you know, spirit of murder and uh, uh, the value of life just take over our community. We got to do something. We have to show, uh, you know, spiritually. You know, the enemy that we're not just going to sit here and let you take our young people out like this. You're not, you're not going to just take over our community. We're going to come out here. We're going to do something about it. That's right. That's right. That, and, and you're so, that is so true. It used to be, well, maybe this is New York or Chicago. Well, maybe it's New Orleans moving a little closer. Maybe it's Baton Rouge. Well, now maybe it's Hammond That's or right. Ponchatoula. Yes, ma'am. It's right at our front door. Yes, ma'am. So we'll be right back. Stay tuned. We're back with Pastor Alani Tucker discussing the problem of violence and crime right here in our own community. Pastor Alani Tucker has taken a a step of faith, uh, believing that prayer changes things. And he wants to tell us a little bit about his experience with prayer walks. Well, you know, it is something that we often do um, in in our in our context, you know, as uh, Southern Baptist, we, we often prayer walk, you know, uh, if we're going to do something major in our community, we'll go prayer walk before it. Or uh, we often, you know, it's one of our ways of uh, getting God involved in our community. We, we just go prayer walk. And uh, when you say prayer walk, 
That just means you walking around praying outside. Uh, actually, it, it, it's it's that is actually what it is. We we walk outside. We pray. We we uh, we pray at homes. Uh, my wife, you know, and myself is something that we do. I, I do in my neighborhood. I walk and just pray over houses. Pray, especially if you know we see uh, little bicycles or basketballs, or we know that there are children there. So we'll walk and we'll pray for those children. You know, Lord, you know, just keep these children safe. Or you know, so it, it is something is our way of, you know, just getting involved and and engaging God in the things that we care about. And we care about our community. So that that was what we decided to do. Let's let's have a prayer walk. So that um, in a very, very short time, very, very short time, um, you know, actually one day, my wife and I talked about it. She said, is that what we want to do? And she created a flyer and she posted a flyer on Facebook. Uh, it was so fast that my wife is very, she's very careful about uh, flyers and digital things and graphics and stuff. But it was so heavy on our heart that she didn't even take the time to even put it actually digitally, digitally on Facebook. She actually took a picture of it because we had no time to waste. We had no time to wait. She took a picture of the flyer and posted it because of the sensitivity of time, you know, that we were working with. But we talked about it Sunday at our church. We posted it on Sunday that we're actually doing it Monday, the very following day. And that's how we know that God was in it. It was a, it was a movement of God because there were five other pastors there. There were other churches there, along with our church, uh, who, who showed up. I mean, I mean, great, just I mean, showing of people's concern for their community. You know, we called it great attendance. We had you know bottled water out there, and it was just powerful to see the people of God. First of all, in a circle that we're praying together, singing a song of victory together. That, you know, we're not going to back down. We're not going to let the enemy just push us around. You know, we are the people of God. You know, we bring the presence of God with us. And so after our circle, we just walk the streets. And as I kind of, my wife and myself kind of were in the rear of just taking care of some logistics that we were trying to do. Um, because it was crazy. There was no stage. There was nothing, you know, no plans. I mean, just we have to move. Uh, actually, to get everything in order, I stood on the back of my pickup truck. Oh. <laughs> and just, you know, y'all, we need to do this. We need to do that. You know, because there was just no time. There's no time. You know, when we see our people dying, you know, people's lives being affected in, in, the, in the most negative way, you know, we, we had no time to waste. So we did that. And to just look from the rear of people walking in the different, you know, because we just told them, just if you feel led to pray for a certain group of people, do that. But we broke up into different directions. Some people going on this side street, some going on this side street. And as we're passing by, there are people just praying with other people. People on the doorsteps of others, just can we pray for you? You know, because, and this is what, what, what I said, is that we understand that not every person that lives in a particular neighborhood is a thug. Not every person is a gangster. Not every person is cold hearted. By far, by far. There are people there who are afraid. Yes. There are those young people who walk those streets every day. We asked a couple of guys, you know, there's about four of them, actually. Say, guys, we, you know, we just know about all the things that are going on here. And we asked them, say, you know, can we pray for you? These are, these are teenagers who walk the streets every day. And they drop their head and walk to us speedily and say, please. And we stood there and we laid hands on them and just prayed for them. Pray for their protection. Because even these who walk the streets every day, they're worried about this. Yes. That people are dying, you know. I, I love what you, well, two things. I love the, the pastor heart that really has almost been imparted to me in this conversation where you're walking around and you're caring for people in that neighborhood. They may not ever even go to a church, but, but you're praying for those. You're looking after those, those sheep mm -hmm. in that block yes, as you pray for them. Yes, that, is a, that is something any and every Christian can yes, do anywhere yes, that we are. Yes, I love that. Yes, and then I love what you said. We're the people of God mm -hmm. and we're not going to back down. That's right. What if the church really believed that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> you know, I, 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 that's a powerful statement that you just made. And if we really believe that collectively and together, not divided, I think we'll see a lot more spiritual impact, you know, that we can actually change things through the power of our, our God, our Lord, who is king. And all we have to do is yield to him and his authority. But a lot of times we, we're a little more concerned with our own authority. And when we take authority, it sort of eliminates what God can do for our community. So you you sensed the heart of God, not only the heart of God, but the urgency of yes. this matter. Yes. And that's why that's why it was a move of God. That's right. In my estimation, you sensed a, a little a wind of the spirit there right. that was saying, do this right now. Who knows how many lives were saved just because you moved right then? I, I felt the power of God all over the streets when we were there. And just to see, because in our own strength, we've promoted things for six months that wouldn't get 40 people, you know, but we had way, we you know, we had double that in one day. 24 hours. 24 hours. It was God drawing and saying, I need my representatives. I need my people who are called by my name. I need you to represent and let's do something about this because God always used men. He always used people, you know, so he needs his people to be in place that he can empower us to make a difference. I hope you're as inspired as I am with this great testimony of what's happening right here in our community and what you can be a part of. Stay with us and we'll be right back to talk some more. Well, we're back with Pastor Lonnie Tucker. Powerful conversation about our community and, and his heart and, and the heart of God for the people in this area. And you know, uh, Pastor Lonnie was speaking about just some of the some of the fear of the people in the neighborhoods as they were out walking. And so, uh, Pastor Lonnie, why don't you just address that? Maybe someone's listening or watching that feels that way. Well, as we as we walked, well, we definitely talked to some that were fearful, some that, you know, uh, do have some feelings of, you know, uh, anxiety and anxiousness. Well, we want to encourage you. And, and by saying this, that uh, we have some things in, in that are planned ahead that, that are going to keep us on the streets, uh, out, available, uh, and I'm also encouraging the churches, you know, to that we understand uh, that uh, there are people who are worried. There are people who have concerns about uh, the murders uh, that are in our community. So I'm just encouraging that we, we get out. We, we go and touch uh, these people who... who have these concerns, have these thoughts, um, and let's be a friend. Let's be a friend to our community. And um, those who, those of you that have the concerns, those of you, there may be some or that, that are just happen to be watching this station, uh, and maybe you are one of the ones who, uh, you know, maybe you just don't value life like you used to. Maybe, you know, you're going through something. Maybe you're, you're just dissatisfied with where you are. Well, we just want you to understand that, it, listen, when we pray that we have a God who is a very present help in a time of trouble and he can touch you at the very point of need you have, you know, but if that's if it's this person, because we're not just talking just the murders that have happened uh, in a certain community. But then there is a, a murder suicide that happened the day of the prayer walk. Um, you know, life is valuable. And, and, and that's what uh, life is very precious. You know, and I just feel, you know, who are we to decide when someone else's time is up or, or their life is gone? And right. so, yeah, I mean, God didn't give that assignment to us. Yes, ma'am. He gave us the assignment to pray and to love one another. That's right. And to reach out. So that that's that's a good word. Uh, do you um, do you sense a a particular reason do, why? There's less value for life now than maybe 10 years ago? Uh, I think so. I, I think there is a reason. And one of the reasons, first of all, we just have an enemy, an mm -hmm. enemy that, that comes to seek to steal, kill, and destroy. Um, but also, just in our, in our 
community when when economic when economic times are tough, you know, uh, there's a less reason to be here. You know, life seems more valuable when there are times of peace, when there are times of abundance. Life seems more valuable. If you think about those who uh, we here in uh, North America, as we look into con- countries who uh, third world countries, you know, what we look at life as in we don't want to we don't want to die. You know, uh, there's a song, you know, uh, everybody want to go to heaven. Nobody wants to die. You know, uh, when we look at those things like that, well, no one wants to die when things are great. No one wants to leave here. Everybody's Maybe enjoying. Maybe there's hope. But there's hope, you know, and and you know, and I believe that we just we enjoy life, you know, and we enjoy being here. We enjoy uh, the great times. But when things are not as peaceful, things are not as pleasurable, you know, times are not as good as times of the old. That there is a uh, dissatisfaction. There are some who are just dissatisfied with their own lives. So, you know, misery loves company. You know, dissatisfaction, uh, you know, will cause us to do things that we wouldn't normally do, I think. You know, we know that, you know, some of these things uh, are uh, over arguments, you know. Uh, You know, so, but if there's a time of peace and a time of abundance, then there's less, you know, so the less educated we become, the more distressed we become, the more violence we're going to see. And you know, of course, I'm a pastor, but the most important, vital thing we have, or should I say person we have, is God. And the more we try to push him out of every aspect of our lives, we're going to see violence. We're going to see dissatisfaction. We're going to see uh, people being disturbed and distressed, you know. Yes. I mean, that's the root of it right there. Yes. Just because there's not abundance, we may be struggling economically, things, but but our peace doesn't come from our circumstances. Exactly. If we know the Lord. That's right. If that's we know right. the Lord. That's right. So, yes, people have all this turmoil and all these crazy arguments and things that just escalate beyond belief. Mm-hmm. But why? Because they don't know God, and therefore they have no peace, and they don't know what to do with all this emotion. Well, and and of course, you know, uh, um, some of this has just been robbery. You know, some of it's been robbery. But it goes back to our God, our morals, you know, what we feel is right and wrong. You know, no matter how bad times get for me, I understand that there are certain parameters that says this is mine. This is yours. No matter because of what I believe in. Mm-hmm. I can't cross those lines because of who I believe in. God has given us a moral conscience, the, the spirit that guides us. And when you're not guided by that, everything is fair. Fair game. Fair game. Right. Yours is mine. Mine is mine. Yeah. So we have to get back to, uh, I'd like to say the old days. The old days. The old well, days where uh, there's family, people sitting at the table together, people in the yard together. I love to see people have a good time and smiling. Yeah. Community. 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 Yes. Where everybody's watching out for everybody else. A little, yes. At least a little bit. At least on your block. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Just as we're getting ready to close out, we can uh, run over some events that you're getting ready to go. But just one more time, let's just talk about the people of God coming to into agreement and saying, this is the line that God has drawn right. Right. by his word, mm-hmm. by the blood of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Talk about that for just a second. Well, uh, you know, a second is hard, but I, I'll try. Um, we're, we're grateful and, and we understand that our God is strong. He's mighty. And being that we're his people, we should be strong. We should be mighty. We should be people of authority, you know. Not and violent. Not violent. Not violent, but people of concern. And I think that was in my Facebook post that people just to have concern and love, you know, to stand and say, you know what, I love you so much. I'm not going to stay in my home and enjoy peace, but I'm going to come out here wherever there is disturbance. 
I'm going to come out here because I love you. I love my community. And that's what, that's what we need. We need the people of God to become uncomfortable hmm. and say, wherever the darkness is, that's where I want to be. Wherever there are people hurting, that's where I want to be. And that's how we do it. That's how we take a, a, a firm stand, uh, just being concerned and love. You know, a lot of times people want to make Jesus as this, you know, kind of soft guy. But, but Jesus was firm. Yes, he the was. Bible, the Bible says that he was full of grace and truth. You know, though he had a understanding heart, a sensitive heart, he also stood for truth. And truth was truth. And he loved his father so much That's that right. he would defend what his father said. Yes, right. Yeah. Amen. So to put that in perspective, tell us what you're planning. This is our, our desire is that we're going to have uh, block parties, different community events, and not to sum up what we've been doing, but to open a door of continuity, that we are always out in our community, always hugging necks, kissing cheeks, and just loving on people um, constantly, that the church will always be out, that the church will always be visible. You know, and when I say the church, I'm not talking about Stillwater in Pontchartula, but the universal church. The church. People who love Jesus and follow him, that we will be out and about, not stuck in a building in a corner somewhere where no one sees us, but that we will be out among any darkness. You know, there are sometimes you go down the aisle of a grocery store and if you see a mess, you know, you'll just go down the next aisle instead of going down that one. Well, we don't want to be that. We, we want to be the people who will walk toward the mess and that will clean it up. That's a great illustration. Tell us uh, how people can find out about your events. You well, your just just as we, we have before, you know, um, We'll be putting things on Facebook. Okay. And uh, so, should they look for Stillwater Baptist to, to that, find out? That on we Facebook? will. We will have it. We will have it uh, on our Facebook. Uh, we will have our, our website is actually uh, www.stillwaterbc.org. Okay. www.stillwaterbc.org, and I'm sure um, we'll, we'll have it up soon, and we'll have those things available. Uh, but. Uh, Facebook has been outstanding for us. You know, we'll be putting it on as well as just flyers in our community. But we want to start something that continues, that we'll never, ever forget where we live. You know, we'll never, ever forget where we've come from, you know, but also where we live. Sometimes we get so caught up into the busyness of life that we really forget our community. We don't take time to know who lives outside of us. We don't take time to know who lives across the street from us because we're so busy. But we cannot be too busy for our community. Good work. Thank you again for coming and sharing with us today. Really appreciate your heart and what you're doing in the community. Thank you for having me. That's all the time we have today for North Shore Talk. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.